little bit over 30 days to the election, so please vote and vote early too. Vote now, early. a good early vote safely. Wear your mask, have your hand sanitizer, have a plan, yes. and also check, check, and recheck before you leave. Call your polling place. Make sure that you're on the register. Like now, it's time. Now they start purging people from the rolls. Make sure not just that you vote but that you've done the research to make sure your vote is counted. And it sucks that we have to do that research, but they're trying to disenfranchise us, y'all. So we have to show them exactly who we are the first time. Yes. Now, a good segue from this, um, I, I remember NeNe Leakes saying, oh, she should give you know, uh, Joe Biden some tips on reading for his next debate. Right, exactly. So. Nini finds herself in the news today. Uh, she was interviewed by Tamron Hall. I'm not sure if you caught the interview, but... I did not. How long is it? Should we peep it now? I saw some clips. All there was was two clips available. It's so hard to find out when she was on today because I'm in Chicago right now, so I didn't really know the time that it was on. Tamron, I love you, and we love your show, and you're getting great interviews. Mm -hmm. But she's got to get a better hybrid deal because Cocktails with Queens, that app stuff, it's way more accessible. Like, people don't watch TV like that, especially right. daytime TV. Like, now, like, I would say this, it's going to be a real different world for daytime TV because now the stay-at-home moms have stay-at-home kids. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, oh, I drop them off at eight or seven or whatever. It's like they're home being homeschooled and now you're not watching TV. You're making sure your kid's doing what they need to do in the Zoom class. So Tamron, like um, they were saying the Andrew Gillum interview was difficult to find if you didn't watch the show. Yes. And it's like, you can't have something that's TV exclusive anymore. Like ABC had the Emmys and they didn't do that stuff streaming. You could only get it with an expensive live Hulu package. And I was just like, oh, okay. I just won't watch. It's that. <laughs> right. I was really frustrated, but I did send you the clip so you can open it in your Twitter and just let me know what you think about this particular one. Okay, now Tamron, this Tony Braxton haircut is cute. Your makeup is on point, but this doily collar, Girl, talk to your stylist, because you, fl you fly and you're beautiful. I could do the polka dot. Like, if it was just a simple collar, it would be a great dress. Great cuffs, great sleeves, great cut. But this fringe, this doily, like this tablecloth, they got around your neck. It was given Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, and Karen Huger read her. I, sometimes I'm embarrassed to see with her. I don't know what she's going to show up with on. But let me try to get past this collar. Sometimes what you have on is distracting. Tamron is calling her out. I appreciated she, that. Yeah, she said, as a woman of color in the journalism industry, I have experienced systematic racism. So if you're going to talk about it, talk about it and call it out and say what the grievance is and move forward. At least Mariah has done that. At least Mariah has said what she's mad about. Nene, right. like you said, we don't know what she wants, but let me keep, let me keep watching. Either shit or get off the pot, honestly. <laughs> okay, first off, why is she in a hotel lobby? I'm seeing people walking by. Yeah. I'm just like, is this your house? This ain't your house. This is a hotel lobby. I'm thinking, wait, she's in Florida or Miami because she was celebrating Peter's, Cynthia's ex-husband's birthday. Oh. So, I don't know. I saw her on Instagram or whatever. Oh, okay. So, she really went live from the hotel lobby because I sure saw some guests just walk behind her. Like, I'm in my hotel room right now. Like, could you imagine me doing pop roast in the hotel lobby? I mean, lobbies are pretty, but no. <laughs> she said, oh, they got rid of all the original girls, so I was the only Black original housewife. Sweetie, honey, baby, cookie, let me tell you something. They rotated them white girls out like they rotated you out. Right, and they replaced the Black housewives with other Black housewives. We added 
Candy. We added Cynthia. We added Phaedra. We added Portia. Now, let's talk about how you called for oh, the final. Oh, wait, hold on. And let's not forget about the Black friends you had on the show, Diana and Minicu. <laughs> right. Remember Minicu? Minicu, who was um, the, in the, and then what about the girl that was with, with the common law marriage? Like, you were the only original. No, you just survived. You were the matriarch of the show, but the show was all black. If they had gotten rid of you, like they got rid of Deshaun Snow, the show would still be black. Right. Like, Potomac is black. So, exactly. like, and, and the thing is, they will fire a white woman quicker than they'll fire somebody from Potomac or Atlanta. <laughs> then white woman be gone, like, <sighs> I'm so confused. Like, does she know what Tamron asked her? And unfortunately, I couldn't see the rest of the interview. Hopefully, maybe some more clips will be out. But just from that clip, I wish Tamron would have, like, pressed her on. Like, because she held Stasi's legs to the fire. But I, I don't know what she did with Nene Lee's because they didn't let her respond in the clip. Anywho, Nene has called for the firing of other Black housewives on the show. If we don't, if we... Have we forgotten that, Cynthia. you know? Uh, right. Portia. Portia. Phaedra. Yep. And Phaedra. Kenya. Ooh. Now, you know, at the time, I'm like, okay, some of those, you know, I may have agreed with. Maybe Kenya needed to leave, but she's a hypocrite. And I'm just like, what does Nene want? Wait, hold a on. victim. Where in the world is Kenya's husband, Mark Daly? <laughs> Where is he? We didn't had a whole six month quarantine. We getting to go into our seven month. We about to batten down the hatches. We don't hear about his restaurant. We heard they were feeding first responders, but we don't hear about that restaurant no more. We don't hear about that husband no more. I mean, Kenya's been. <laughs> now, I wanted to bring up something. You just reminded me. So, you know, I'm in Chicago, right? I should have did Pop Rose from wherever uh, Jesse Smollett like, I should have did it from the scene. I'm trying to find the scene of the crime here right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. So if I run into, like, Sissy Small Yeah, He Who, I will let y'all know. Ooh. I will let y'all know. I, it, you need to put that on Instagram. You got to take a picture of, well, this is supposedly where it happened. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, like, ooh, and go to the area and really get a feel of that's where it would happen. Right. Like, I wish, like, yeah. I wish the live so someone could tell me where the subway was so I can go by the subway. And also, if you're training to be in this video and you're on this strict diet, the last thing you're going to eat is subway in the middle of the night. In, like, sub-zero temperatures. Walking. Walking. Von Dutch, Chia Pets, Carrie Hilson's career, what do all these things have in common? They're fads. Now, fads, they come in and they go. And fads are fun, but when it comes to nutrition, you need facts, not fads. Now, a fact is collagen is the single most abundant protein in your body. It holds everything together from bones, muscles, and tendons to hair, skin, nails, even your GI tract. But once you hit your mid-20s, collagen production slows. The signs of aging, like lines and wrinkles, these all stem from less collagen in the body. And if you follow the standard or even the above standard American diet, you probably aren't getting nearly as much collagen as your body needs to replenish. Now, what's the solution? Bub's Naturals. Bub's Naturals is the way to go. It's exceptionally soluble, highly bioavailable, easily mixed into hot or cold drinks, and you see the benefits fast. It's 100% sustainably sourced, grass-fed, pasture-raised peptides. No flavors, fillers, or impurities, nothing more or less than the best collagen out there. And 10% of every Bub's natural sale goes to charity. So you'll feel great while doing good. I've been using Bub's and I feel amazing. When I would do my laps in the pool, I would get out a little tired, a little achy, and feeling a little 38, even though I'm 37, you know, hey, we getting up there. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to take care of the joints and the muscles. And it is something that I'm so happy to put into my, my 
shakes every morning, or sometimes I'll put it in my tea. It gives me energy through the day. I'm able to do a lot more videos. It keeps my mind sharp. It keeps my joints fluid. And I have to say, I feel all around better since I've been enjoying both. Collagen has been shown to improve vitality, recovery, and facilitate faster healing, especially after a workout. Your joints will thank you, and collagen contains glycine, which boosts your ability to bend and flex pain-free. Bub's collagen has more nitrogen than other proteins like whey, giving muscles better fuel for intense training. Get 20% off your first order when you use promo code ROAST at bubsnaturals.com. That's 20% off with promo code ROAST at B-U-B-S naturals.com. Okay, I guess we can restart. That was a good read. We're going to give some better ones to sorry ass Nini because I'm sick of her. Huh. Just on screen whining. Yeah, before we, re like, why is she whining? What does she want? She's, here's the thing, I'll tell you what she wants. Her mortgage, that's what she wants. She wants attention. Mm. And she doesn't know how to get it. <laughs> October is for me, the beginning of the holiday season. October is one of my favorite months. Like on the East Coast, October, like I know it's getting cold out there and I love my palm trees and all that, but. I will say, for a brief moment, when I think about October, I'm like, oh, I want to put on a sweater and watch the leaves fall, and great, great movies come out in October. Now, I know you aren't a horror buff, but you also have great movies like Mean Girls. You all, like, it's just, it's the start of the real entertainment season and the holiday season, and you know I'm a homebody, so it's like, this is when you get home and you nestle. What did you say it was cutting season or cuffing season? I call it cuffing it's season. Both. Okay. Cutting or cuffing. But it is the start of my favorite time of year, and I am not going to let the virus ruin it. So we're going to have lots of Halloween movies and lots of watch-alongs, because you know I love to do my short um, scary movie watch-alongs, so those will be back this year. I just wanted to let everybody know. So moving on, um, we have more Dr. Dre news and you know his legal battle with his uh, ex-wife, Nicole Young. So it's been good news for him. He doesn't have to pay the, I believe, almost $2 million request. After his divorce is far from over, Dr. Dre is likely celebrating his recent court victory over his estranged ex-wife. Uh, she previously filed court documents requesting significant financial report, like about, I believe, $1.5 million. Well, the judge officially rejected it. Um, and he also rejected her request to, uh, that he pays $5 million for her lawyer's fees. So, yeah, she won't be getting that. But I'm pretty sure she's going to get something. Well, that's why you aim high. She's like, look, I'm going to say $2 million, And if I end up with, you know, $1 million, we going to be okay. Right. I'm like... He's worth like over like what, 500 million? Run those pockets, please. You've been with him for like what, two decades? You know, I also feel like I prefer men like Jeff Bezos. Here's the thing, did they have, they had a public divorce because they're public people. Was it messy? No, they, he said, look, I got a Billy, you got a Billy, we got a Billy, and we got a hundred Billy. She is now, like you said, the richest woman in the world. Wasn't no, wasn't no fighting, wasn't no contention, wasn't nobody running to court back and forth. It's like, this is bad press for you. I would just pay you to go away. I'd be like, oh, you want half? Here you go. I have still have $400 million left, and I am Dr. Dre. I have proven I can make another $400 million. And also, how does your life differ? And this is, a, like, if we have any super, super rich people in the chat, for the love of God, please let us know, because we never may become $100 million or $1 billion heirs. It may never, and there will be millionaires, I'll say that. I'm going to speak that into existence, and that is the fact and the truth. Millionaires, yes, but billionaires, like, how does your life differ from 400 to 800 million? What is it that you cannot do? Go into space? Like literally, like you're talking about the budget for the US space program. 
Like, unless you're launching rockets into space, I don't understand, like, what, what is that damn expensive? Caviar only $65 to $159. Are you, like, how much of it are you eating? Like, uh, what, and like I, I can see, like, what costs so much? Like, where, where does it end with money? And since, you know, this is an election season and the economy is such an issue and wealthy, wealth inequality is such an issue, it is something that has crossed the windmills of my mind. Like, I can see, okay, maybe from 50 to $100 million, there can still be something of a life change. After a hundred million, like, what else are you doing? Like, are you just whining about, oh, I don't have the biggest yacht? Is that what it is? Do you need more yacht money? That's the only thing I could think that could burn through money like that is a large yacht. <laughs> like, the thing is, once you buy your $50 million home, you renovate it, you, it's, it's there. Furniture ain't that damn much. And also, are you redecorating your house every season? That just means you don't have taste like Gabrice and Gabrissi. So if anybody is super rich, you don't have to, you know, put yourself on blast. We ain't asking you for nothing but your opinion. But is there a point where, okay, I really do have enough and they're like, I can't buy anything else. Like there has to be a point when you can't buy, like you have every, literally everything in the world, access to everything in the world. What, like, at what point are you like- It's bragging rights. It's bragging rights and Jeff Bezos, he's going to make that money back anyway. So I'm guessing that's why he don't really care. And Dr. Dre, I think he just wants to get closer to a billion dollars just to say he's worth a billion dollars. Hmm. So it's more so like titles and ego and power than expenditure, I think. Yeah, I'm working for money so that I can actually enjoy it. Like, um, right. my friends were over yesterday and they were like, oh, do you gamble? I said, mm -mm. I like my money right where I can see it, hanging up in my closet. Shout out to Carrie Bradshaw. And that's why I buy a new Mackage coat every year. That's like, you, like you gamble. That's what, that's my gambling money. I'm just going to get me a coat. Well, damn, yeah. get it this year because now I'm out here. Although I would say I've never been into shoes because I feel like like, don't get me wrong, I love a good shoe, but I feel like they fall apart. Like, they, like I, like they right. fall apart very quickly. Like, those coats, I'm going to have for 20 years. Like, that's an investment piece. A shoe, it's like, if it's a good shoe, it's like, okay, I'm only going to wear this maybe once a quarter. Mm -hmm. Speaking of more legal news, Kris Jenner is being sued by her ex-bodyguard for sexual harassment. Uh, I, I just, okay. Uh, she's been accused of groping and being inappropriate. So the former bodyguard of Chris is filing sexual harassment uh, lawsuit against the Kardashian matriarch, according to the blast. Um, according to legal documents, the, body, the bodyguard is alleging he is the victim of a pattern of unwanted and unwelcome sexual advances and otherwise harassing misconduct by the 64-year-old, including unwanted massages, and causing her pelvis to run up against, to rub up against his, this is shade room, I'm sorry. There's just so many grammatical errors. And causing her pelvis to rub up against him without consent. Uh, he's worked with the Kardashian family since May 2017. In addition to sexual harassment, the bodyguard who happens to be black is also alleging a hostile work environment, racial discrimination, and gender discrimination in his suit against Chris. Now check that. This is a lot. Of course she says it's not true, but um leave it on the bottom. You're like, I can buy it. Right. You know, like if, if you saw it on sale at the supermarket for $2.99, you'd be like, you know, I'm gonna take it on home. Fuck, let me go on and try this. Right. Um, well, I think she should just throw some money his way and make it go away instead of having more for us to talk about. <laughs> like, I think she needs to, like, you know, not a cease and desist. It's something else. It's like, um, like give him a non-disclosure amount so he can never talk about it again and send him on his way. It's called a settlement. It's called a settlement. Like, I, I thought I was mature enough to congratulate Nicki Minaj and, uh, and Usher and Kevin Hart. 
<laughs> I guess Usher, not. I mean, Usher and Kevin Hart, they got like five or six kids with five or six different women. Like, that's like saying Future had a baby. That's like saying <laughs> I had yogurt. It's like, I eat yogurt. Okay. They had that. <laughs> But no, we can we can give them their congratulations. Nicki Minaj, we may have our disagreements and you may have written some good songs, but I sincerely do want to congratulate you for having your baby and I wish you and your family nothing but the best. And that's for real. No hate, no shade, no anything. Now your career, when we talk about your career, we'll get to the shade, but your family, I'm happy for you. I'm happy you were able to have a happy, a happy, healthy baby during this fucking virus. I'm happy to Kevin Hart and and who was the other one? Usher. And Usher, like this is a dangerous time for Black women to be having children. It's always a dangerous time for Black women to be having children. But I'm glad everybody is good. And yes, let's congratulate everybody who's had wonderful additions to their families, and now they're going to have even better holidays because of it. Now I gotta figure out what the hell I'm gonna do for the holidays. What are you gonna do for the holidays? We gotta figure that out. We gotta make a plan. We gotta set up our Zooms in the kitchen. Cause you know, right, exactly. I would say, I'll say this. I think we're all taking things a little more seriously now because if you've got all this money and all this security and that virus just walked on in and said, I am Amanda Seals and I am invited. You That's what the virus, her. girl, the virus Amanda seals there. <laughs> the virus said, oh, you think I'm not invited on Air Force One? I'm getting on. I'm getting on. That virus is Amanda uninvited seal. The fact that you just compared Amanda seals to a virus, uh, we're going to move on. We're just going to move on. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain? Or do you have trouble sleeping at least once a week? You're not alone. Many of us do. I've had issues recalibrating my sleep schedule since I kind of work on the East Coast but live on the West Coast and Feels has helped me immensely. What is Feels? Feels is a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. The thing to remember about CBD is that finding the right dose is important. Everyone's dose is different. So leave room to experiment over the course of a week or so. You may need to take more or less to get the effects that you're after. Now, Fields provides real human support. If you're new to the CBD, Fields offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience. Fields works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high hangover or addiction. Now, for membership, join the Fields community to get Fields delivered directly to your doorstep every month. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel at any time. Fields has us feeling our best every day and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to fields.com slash roast to become a member and get 50% automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. That's fields.com slash roast. You know, I don't like horror, but um, I am happy that there are a few black horror movies that are coming out. Did you see the one with um, the guy from Power and um, Loretta Devine? No. It's coming out. Like, um, you could do a trailer review. How about that? I need to know everything that Loretta Devine is doing. Now that we can't protect Ruth Bader Ginsburg, protect Jennifer Lewis and Loretta Devine. I love oh, Loretta Devine and Omari Hardwick. I will say this too. Name me one bad role Loretta Devine has been in. She kills everything she does. That is one of my favorite actresses, and I would like her to be a little more sung, especially since she can sing. She needs her flowers, honestly. And a lot her of her is Cheryl Lee Ralph. By the way, <laughs> Cheryl Lee Ralph is an amazing actress. Singing does not put food on the table. I did not join the choir because of that woman. I did not join the choir at my own high school because of that woman. She was, she was giving it. Anywho, <laughs> the name of the uh, movie is called Spell. It's coming out soon. It's a um, voodoo doll thriller movie. I hear there's another one too with Felicia Rashad. 
Like we are, I'm loving that we get, we getting our black horror genres. Like, like, you know, with Lovecraft country, like, you know, we don't see black heroes in the sci-fi and the horror universe. So I'm glad that they're doing that. And I would say maybe that's why you don't like horror because horror has always been white. And now we're right. actually seeing, oh, we can do horror. We can do right. horror and we will show up and see, like, you don't like horror, but you love Lovecraft country. So maybe it's you didn't like horror that didn't maybe well, show the horrors of our lives. Because I love how Lovecraft Country will be like, there are monsters, but white people will still be after us. It's like, there's a whole alien over there, but you're worried about me being black and I'm not bothering you? Get it together! Now, I just want to give a shout out to the old school horror movies or, <clears throat> like, I remember um, Tales from the Hood. Vampire in Brooklyn, and let's not forget Death by Temptation. That scared the fuck out of me. You gotta, you gotta look that, like, you might have to look that up, but it scared the shit out of me, and I never wanted to look at horror movies again. And Candyman, of course. Oh, Candyman was amazing. Oh, but the Felicia Rashad, it's called um, Black Box. It's on October 6th. So this week, it's on Amazon. Oh, I will be tuning in. Okay, so a lot of people have been in my inbox about this woman. I had to look it up. Um, shout out to um, Storm Monroe, because he interviewed her, Jaguar Wright. I had no idea who this woman was. I, I, I got to say, I, did, I haven't. But she's a great singer. Um, apparently, she has a bone to pick with Mary J. Blige. I'm not sure what Mary J. Blige did to her. Shout out to Storm Monroe. That was a really good interview. And congratulations at 100,000 followers for him. Anywho, she was going off on Clive Davis. And, and also congratulations to 54,000 subscribers to us as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, congratulations. She went off on Clive Davis, uh, P. Diddy, and Mary J. Blige. Um, she called Clive Davis an old queen as well as the devil. Um, she said some real juicy tea about Diddy. Like, I, I, I don't even want to repeat it. Just go over and look at the video. And Mary J. Blige, like, you know, she claimed that, you know, she licked Snatch. She said that she can't sing. She said she was jealous of Jaguar right now. She seems like she has nothing else left to lose. So that's why she's talking. And I get it. Now, I will say this. With Niecy Nash's surprise nuptials, we never know who's doing what behind closed doors, and it's nobody's business. But Mary J ain't been out here hurt nobody. Diddy took half her money. Kendu took the rest. And that's why she's on power right now, trying to keep her houses together. The Hef has been in eviction for 10 years. Leave Mary J Blige alone. She's suffered enough. I agree. Like. You can go after Diddy and Clive, but come on, you know? Mary ain't done nothing to nobody. Right. <laughs> oh, you've got to start watching Power. I think you would enjoy her on there. I, I really do. Well, can I watch um, that without watching the original Power? Yes. Okay. I, I'm going to try to put it in the queue. Like, I just told people that I'm going to watch Watchmen. I got to watch that. Um, ooh, the girlfriends. Fargo. With Chris Rock, right? Fargo. And you don't need to watch the other seasons for it, because I gave it a shot. Fargo. You will... I heard the first 30 minutes. You will really enjoy Fargo. And I really do think you'll enjoy Power. So much TV. It's the high season. TV's back. Remember when we were watching reruns all summer because nothing was in production? That's a good point. I should not be complaining. It's an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> Drea Michelle says she doesn't get child support. From which kid? Like, you had a whole kid that, you know, you was stripping to support, so we assume that you made poor decisions with the men that you decided to have children with. You like to be abandoned after pregnancy. Jesus. I I'm sorry. If it happened to me once, it ain't happening again. 
and oh. you were with Orlando Scandrick, some third string football player, you were always more famous than him. All like you hung out. the Kardashians should be paying your child support. You're one of their supporting characters. And remember, I think Rihanna fired her. Right? I gotta watch the Savage Fenty show. Like Shea Kool Aid walked in it, Gigi Good walked in it, and Jada Hall walked in it. Oh, okay. It was good. Like I saw the clips. Are they inviting us for the menswear collection? Because we need to. They eat. had the menswear collection and they sold out. And we weren't invited to walk. <laughs> as tall and beautiful as we are, she got to get on the ball. She got to get on the ball. That, that robe did look nice, but I don't know. Like those boxers look like they come in like 3XL. You know, like nobody wears those anymore. What do they wear now? I mean, like, <laughs> is it Andrew Christensen? Is it a boxer brief tee? Like, what is it? I, I prefer the comfortability of a boxer brief personally. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, Rihanna has so many gay fans. I just thought she would have some something that's more appealing to that demographic. Mm. Just read between the lines of what I'm saying. Um, I haven't seen the collection, but I definitely agree. I feel like, and I would say the same thing with, yeah, I'm not even going to bring up, you know, Ivy Park, but I, we're just going to talk about Rihanna. We're not going to talk about the disappointment of Ivy well, Park. And you see, I love in Antebellum, Janelle Monet had on Ivy Park, like, kind of early in the movie. Oh my God. Oh and my that's God. when I should have known <laughs> It was going to be a disaster. That's when I should have known it was going to be terrible. Because Ivy Park ruins everything that the light touches. It's like the reverse of the Lion King. But um, but yeah, I, I feel like Rihanna's clothing line is great. I'm happy to see it. She's making a ton of money. But if you're going to design for the sissies, you're going to have to give us mesh. You're going to have to give us, you know, ASOS. You're going to have to give us, you know, men's fashion Nova, except higher end. Right, and I'm just glad that her fashion show has now replaced Victoria's Secret fashion show because Rihanna's line is just so much more inclusive, I think, of different body types, you know, everything. So um, our last pop roast, uh, we filmed that on Saturday. And the following day was the Potomac episode that, you know, we've all been waiting for. So, after seeing the episode, like, and shout out to y'all who watched my review. Oh, my God. Just so many opinions. It, it's such a polarizing um, debate. But who started the fight to you? Okay. I feel like sometimes you have to really look and see what is in front of you. Monique said in the last episode, why are we doing this? Why are we bringing up marriages? We know that's a dark road to go down. Um, I think that maybe uh, Chris Samuels might have some trust issues with a beautiful woman like Monique and he's running around with a face looking like one of the mountains that I can see from my bedroom. So I could see her being like, now look, if you're going to play with something, if you're going to be shady, be shady. But saying, you know, one of my kids isn't my husband's, that's too much. And I think that the ferret, known as Candace, I'm going to call her a ferret, um, because she's very shady, shysty, sneaky, and always gnawing away at something. Like her mother has gnawed away at her self-esteem until, she's had, until there, was no, there was none left. So I will call her the ferret, known as Candace. She knew, you know what? You're inviting this girl around. You're spreading these rumors all over town. You're trying to, you know, keep your place on the show and help these other heifers get back on the show to the detriment of my marriage. An ass whooping is in order. It, there's not like the thing is, it wasn't even about that incident. She really thought you were trying to mess with my marriage my marriage, my family, my children, the children that I birthed out of my vagina, you're gonna affect them 
that was Mama Bear right there. That was Mama Bear. And it was, I can't get you right now, but it was a slow tick, 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 boom. You, so you think Monique wasn't at fault? I think that there are a lot of things off camera that have mm -hmm. been alluded to, that have been kind of talked about, but that we don't know the full story. But I okay. really feel like Candace tried it. And Monique was like, you know, like, imagine if somebody messed with your relationship. I get it. it it's just like, like sometimes hands are necessary. But I have right. to give Candace a shout out for her wig glue and how she stitched it down. It's Ooh, like she that was good. It's like she knew she was going to get dragged. It's like, okay, let me make sure I have this here ass whooping ready. The wig was secured. That was a secured wig. It did, like you saw, like she was grabbing for it. It did not come off. I gotta give it to her. If I that think was you met her hairstylist. You met her hairstylist before. I did? Yeah, like, um, he was on Growing Up Hip Hop or something. The, oh. the, uh, oh. um, so this is my take on the fight. You might disagree, but just That's hear me out. So what happened off camera, I get, but it's really confusing for the viewer. Now, the thing is, like, if you, if you had that energy for Candace, have that energy for Giselle, too. Have that energy for Robin. Have that energy for Sharissi, you know? And I get her frustration. I get the frustration with Candace. I get the frustration with her marriage as well. That was taking a toll on her. But, like, when they came face to face, I just feel like, uh, well, let me back up. Like, Candace apologized twice to Monique, too. Like, she apologized for, you know, bringing up Ashley's drama, and she also apologized for inviting Sharissi to the event. So I just feel like Monique kind of had a chip on her shoulder, and I love her, but I still got to hold her accountable. Like, I feel like they were both at fault, but I think most of, like, like that hair flip, you can't do that. Now, what if Candace did that to um, Monique? I would have been like, okay, Candace, you asked for that dragon. You shouldn't have touched her hair. But I, you are right. Can't, um, Monique wanted to whoop Candace's ass. She wanted a reason. She was just waiting for the reason. And I saw that fight 10 times, one time in slow motion. Um, yeah, I think they both provoked each other, but I think Monique was a little bit on the wrong side. She wasn't sorry about it, you know? Like, she, she had no remorse for, for whipping Candace. So I just wish that, like, you know, she had some type of remorse. I'm not sure if she's still going to come back. I heard they haven't talked since the fight. Um, yeah, I, I just got to be honest. Got to be honest, honest, honest. Got to be honest. Um, I just feel like Monique was more so the aggressor. That's all. I agree, and you brought up some great points. Robin and Gabrissi. Um, Candace was on a live and she realizes that Robin and Gabrissi were the ones that really instigated that incident. They, I mean, yeah. you saw how Robin was just sitting back, like looking like somebody's happy watching their kids fight. Like, <laughs> and Giselle pushed to Monique. Giselle sure did. And Giselle is jealous of Monique, which is Giselle lives in a poorly decorated $900,000 barn. Yes, with no animals. Ooh, and also we got to talk about how the Pappy Cuss pastor Jamal Bryant out and said, I'm done here. We got, he got six or seven baby mamas. I'm going to act cool on camera, but the second I get off, this mic is still hot. Baby, your father embarrassed you. He embarrassed you. I mean, that was embarrassing. And the truth is, he knew it was for a plot line, and I'm sure next year or by the reunion, oh, no, we're not together because it wasn't working out with the family. It's not that it wasn't working out with the family. Nobody wants your big-headed ass. They have no chemistry. And the way he talks is just always in, like, <clears throat> let, me, let me try to do my impression of Jamal Bryant. Like, um, I, I just want to say that uh, I, I, I'm happy for uh, Giselle and my children. I, I want to open up this restaurant for my kids. 
and let's have some, I want to teach them hard work. I, I just want to appreciate that. Like my, uh, my other children, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah, see, yeah. So I just, I don't know. He, he just, I don't know. It's because he reminds me of R. Kelly. He just gives me the eerie, the, the heebie-jeebies because he looks like R. Kelly too much. That's all. Shout out to people who love my um, Jamal Bryan impression. You know, it's on my video. <laughs> That's a great impression. Um, I, I, he gives me the heebie-jeebies because his skin is so bad. I'm like, is that hepatitis C or hepatitis A? But I know hepatitis when I see it. Maybe it's syphilis, but untreated. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Or he got to oh. it too late and it messed up his face because his face, I'm like, child, like we have bevel, tin skin, like all type of things to keep them razor bumps down. But I don't know how you have razor bumps on your nose. Jesus. Okay. I'm, I'm just so, saying. I'm just saying. Six to seven baby mamas, that he's the future of the church. Speaking of that, like I right after I heard that, I Googled and he says he has five children. So I'm a little confused with the math. Maybe like, maybe Google is wrong. Maybe he has like seven kids. I, I would say this. The father was probably exaggerating a little bit, but if he has five kids, he could have two other baby mamas. Okay. Two other baby mom, me, and then maybe there might be a sixth child that we don't know about because he do kind of keep his stuff under the radar. So there Look, could be, you know, three other baby mamas. I don't want to deal with one baby mama. That's why I'm gay. <laughs> um, not to put my dad on blast, but I'm just saying he it's a spades game with him. He got seven in a possible. <laughs> Like, no, I called him out on my last video. I love my dad, but Papa was a rolling stone. He has seven in the possible. It's a spades game with my dad. Well, um, I, I, I love my dad, and he watches the show, and oh, he loves this. Oh, my God. Hey, Chris's dad. Um, thank you for giving me such a good friend. No shade, no tea. It, it, it is what it is. I laugh about it all the time. I ain't tell you business. You can like, don't get mad at me. Get mad at him. Right. <laughs> you know what I hate? I hate poorly made socks. I hate when like you know the fabric gets all stretchy and it kind of just like hangs off your ankles. I hate that you know it develops more holes than like a Tyler Perry plot. Like just be uncomfortable, you know. So. To perform at your best, you need to feel your best from head to toe. Features has solely focused on engineering innovative, high-performance socks for almost 20 years. They've created socks with a custom-like fit to prevent the issues with conventional socks. No more bunching, slipping, friction, and blisters. Multiple cushion levels from ultra-light to max cushioning for unsurpassed performance. Now, let me get that leg up. So, not only is it comfortable and durable, it's stylish. It's, it's cute. I'm sorry for those who can't see on the podcast, but yes, I love these socks. As soon as I put it on, they're the most comfortable socks I've ever tried on. And I'm not, like, kidding at all. Um, you know how I, us New Yorkers, like, we're walking all the time? I want some comfortable socks. And also, I'm in the service industry, which means I'm on my feet from eight to 10 hours a day. So these socks are a godsend. I love them. Features are engineered to help you achieve your best every day, whether you're working out or on the go. Targeted compression acts like a hug around the arch of your foot, keeping the sock in place and preventing it from bunching, slipping, or sliding down into your shoe. The anatomical design conforms to the left-right shape of the foot, creating a custom-like fit that keeps the sock in place so you can focus on your workout. Work out harder, recover faster, get stronger, run faster, and look great doing it. Features are so durable and long-lasting that if you're unsatisfied at any point, they'll give you a replacement pair, no questions asked. Family-owned, Hugh Gaither founded the company in 2002, and now he and his sons, John and Joe, own and operate the company in North Carolina. Their mission, to create products that help you achieve your personal best. 
CY Features is quickly becoming the number one running sock in America. For listeners of Pop Roast, you can receive $10 off your first pair of features by going to features.com and using our code ROAST. That's $10 off your first pair when you go to F-E-E-T U-R-E-S dot com and enter promo code ROAST at checkout. Again, that's features, as in features, features.com and use my code ROAST and get $10 off your first pair of features. So just last housewife news, Teddy was saying that she was blindsided by the news of her firing. She heard first from the Daily Mail before Bravo contacted her. Now, ain't that some shit? She said her ego was a bit bruised as she wondered, how was I blindsided by this? How did this happen and I didn't know? She admitted she should have seen the writings on the wall when the current season aired and so many amazing things she filmed were never shown. All the things that made me likable, redeeming human being were not shown on the season. So if you only seen a certain part of somebody, it's really hard to connect with them. I'm not blaming production or Bravo. I was there to do a certain part and that part I did. But if you don't see the other part, it's hard to relate to a person. So then you are blaming production and Bravo. I filmed all this amazing stuff. No, we didn't look at your little infomercial for your little 200 calorie a day, you know, accountability program. You thought you were Candy Burris, but you're not. We don't like you and your husband ain't that fucking attractive. Maybe he was cute back in the day, but he aged like milk. Oh. And the thing is, Teddy, this truly proves you have been living in your father's shadow and off of your family trust, because I don't know how you could be that stupid with all the elite education that you've had to not understand you haven't brought shit to the show in three seasons. So yes, Bravo will chew you up and spit you out. And that's why they had you bring the brandy bullshit. Now, <laughs> That. that that really is a nice, you know, bow on that whole situation. There's really nothing else to say on that, honestly. I mean, here's the thing. Did you see it? I didn't want to. <laughs> like every review, because I did review the Housewives of Beverly Hills, most of her scenes fast forward. Best things. Fast forward. <laughs> so hopefully sudden snatch that diamond right out her hand, hopefully. Sutton. I, I mean, I, I think she so. I need to hang out with her and her family for an afternoon to be like, okay, are y'all like get out, you know, white people or are you good white people? Because if you good, if you good people, I don't care what you is. If you good people, I fuck with you. But I just wanted to, because the thing is, I, Sutton's one of them, two years later, we've been standing a racist. Mm-mm, you got, I'm, I watch your ass like Erica Jane. I'm still like, I like Erica Jane's fashions, but I'm still, I got a good eye. I got a real good eye. So okay. Sutton, Sutton needs some more vetting. So last week on Pop Rose, you had a very memorable ending to the show. And we talked about Lisa Ray. Um, and it's crazy because even before she embarrassed herself, her castmates, and her sister, the brat, I brought up the brat because she has some ignorant things to say about, you know, bisexuality. Well, so, no. wait, Lisa Ray had some ignorant things to say about bisexuality, not the brat. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I brought up the brat because I'm just like, you have your sister. How could you like have these views when your sister says she was bisexual? So then we see that that whole situation wait, happened. Wait, Anne was in the closet for years. Now, granted, you saw it was an open closet. I ain't gonna redo it, but we saw it was an open closet. And you want to talk about outing people, but your whole sister is out here, you know, undercover undercover and you're saying oh these bisexuals need to be exposed so bisexual women it's fine niecy nash can keep it you know under her lip and not these lips but you know and your sister can keep it under her lip queen latifah can keep it under her lip but you know men we got to be out and proud with it right so then um <clears throat> you already covered like you know 
that uncomfortable interview, how she shut everybody up, said, fuck all y'all. I get that. So <laughs> now... That is also what happens when you get in an argument with family business. Like, that was one of them, I would have said, like, one, are y'all sure you don't want to, like, maybe have a moment? Like, you know, if not, that's okay. This may not be the time. Like, that's one of them, you got to put your hands up because that's family business. And that's why Lisa Ray said, shut the fuck up. Fuck all y'all. For real. Because the thing is, you're talking about a relationship that she's had her entire life, and you, didn't, you don't even know enough about this relationship not to bring this heifer on the show. So you are idiots who know nothing. So shutting the fuck up might be the best idea. I think she could have done a little bit more professionally, though. Um, no. I no. actually, I, I, st I don't think it was necessary. I stand Lisa Ray. I stand Lisa Ray in this moment. Don't get on camera and try to treat me a different way than you treat me off camera. Especially if you can get your clout up and your ratings up. I know this is all about a money grab and you're my blood, my flesh and blood, my sister. And you done done some shit. And you know, we need to have a conversation and you going to pop up on cocktails and Queens when I'm at work, when she, Lisa was at work, at work. Imagine if I'm in the middle of my job and, or you're in the middle of your job and you know, Oh, let's settle a family issue at work. On camera? No, Lisa had every right to do what she did. And honestly, I think Lisa kept it cute. I would have called her everything but a child of God. I would have called her a money-grubbing piece of shit because I feel like that was a money-grubbing move. And it was clearly about a rating and a click and a view. And also, I feel like Lisa was like, let me let you know I do not need my sister to get a click and a view. I'm not. Mm -hmm. She is. Right. Hey, and, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he said, hey. After the interview, like after everyone, you know, had their little laughs and everything to say, uh, Lisa Ray McCoy explained herself. I'm trying so hard not to say Issa Ray. I'm sorry, Issa Ray, if I keep saying it. But she said that she was mad that well, she said it really vague, but what I got from it was she was mad that the brat didn't um, disclose to her about coming out. That's what basically I got from that. I I got that for I got that from the interview, the uncomfortable moment, and it's she said she was the last to know about that, but I'm just like, you didn't know that. Well, That's no. why it was just strange to me. Well, no, what I think it was is Lisa knew that she was bisexual. She didn't know she was coming out. And so the fact that, like, I'm sure this is something that they've talked about for years on end. And I'm sure Lisa's been through several relationships with her in and out of prison. So I, I could see why Lisa would be very upset where it's like, one, you know, you know, we are both public sisters. We're in the public eye. Like, People are going to ask me stuff, so I need to know what to say. Like, that's, I think, you know, a family rule and a family bond. And Lisa's never spoken poorly of her sister. So it's like, girl, you didn't even give me the script. Like, nobody said you had to ask me for permission. I don't care what you do, but let me know what's going on. I don't want to be getting calls from my publicists and the blogs and the press and being hit up when I'm just doing a random live talking about what it's like to be Lisa Ray. And everybody's like, oh, your sister came out. Your sister got married. You're like, wait, what? You got married? And then also, you got married and you didn't introduce, like, you didn't think enough of me. Like, not that I'm going to shade your decision, but maybe I would say this, you don't know about the family. Maybe it could be like that show I reviewed, Mary Millions, where Lisa would say, oh, I don't approve. And she didn't want that disapproval. Like, there's a lot that we don't know, but I definitely feel like it was really shitty of the brat to come on that show knowing you hadn't spoken to her in months and thinking she was just gonna make nice with you in front of the camera. She embarrassed you because what you did was embarrassing and despicable. And if anybody ever tried to pull that shit on me, I would do the same thing. I'd be like, oh, you wanna tell business? All right, well sit down, ho. I'm about to tell all your business. You know what? I appreciate this point of view. I did not think of it that way. 
I did not think of it that way. So you brought up a very good point. Like, oh, perfect example. Like you said earlier in the episode, it's a spades game with your dad. What if I brought the possible on the show to wish you a happy birthday? How would you Touché. feel? Touche. Okay, I, I I get it. Or if you brought if you brought my ex on the show too. Ooh, I would. I don't even know who your ex is, but I would never. Exactly. So I I get it. I, I totally get it. It would be hard for me to keep it cute. So yeah, I, I get it. All right, in more Halloween news, because it is October and I'm obsessed with it, so, like, it's going to be this for the next four weeks. Um, and also, I just need something to be happy about and focus on, because we don't know what's coming. I'm a little election stressed, so I'm just like, you know what, let's just focus on Halloween. Just just focus on something you can control right now. Right. And voting. And voting. Halloween and voting. But they've remade one of the first... Um, Halloween movies I ever reviewed. They re remade The Witches. It is coming out on yes, and Hathaway and Octavius and o Octavia Spencer. Spencer, Octavia Spencer. Okay, I didn't want to call her Octavia Butler. I don't know who that is, but there's two Octavia. I think Stanley Tucci too. Stanley Tucci and Hathaway. We've got a new young black actor that is playing the role of Luke. And it is, and Chris Rock is narrating. So it's, yes, it, they definitely, they are giving us multi culty the witches. I am here for it. it look, I watched the trailer. It looked amazing. HBO Max, October 22nd. I'm going to review it. I can't wait to see it. That's from my childhood. I love Angelica Houston, right? Yes. Oh, that's uh, what I always say. Until next year. <laughs> She she really acted that role. I thought she was a witch in real life. She tore I, that role up. I mean, it was a good. I feel like everybody in that movie tore their that role up, and that was like when we were writing good juicy roles for white women, and now we're writing good juicy roles for everybody. Right. I love how we had that whole like um, South Korean, North Korean like plot line on Lovecraft Country because it's like, okay, yes, we can bring other nationalities in too. Like we, when we say people of color, we mean it. And shout out to that actress too, because she started out on the real world San Diego. No. Right. Yeah. Like that was like her first, um, like on camera television role was on real world. I think her name is Jamie Chung. Shout out to her and um, the woman who played her mother um, on that episode because they yeah. they did amazing. Tory Lane's father says his son didn't shoot Megan the Stallion. This game ain't over. They'll realize who was right and who was wrong. Now I can understand parents need to defend their children. That's you know a natural instinct. It proves you're a good parent, unlike Floyd Mayweather who let his daughter Yaya Mayweather get pregnant by NBA young boy who then quickly got arrested but also has been cheating on her and she's still facing a uh, an attempted murder charge for slashing that girl who ended up with nerve damage in her arm see that's a shitty parent but another way to be a shitty parent is not accepting your child's faults now when they remove the bullets out of her heel clearly someone shot her and Meg the Stallion is a young woman a beautiful woman, a very intelligent woman. I highly doubt that she would pull a Sissy Smollett and shoot herself in the heel. I don't think she would do that. Do you think she would do that, Chris? Do you think she would? Uh, just, I just thought of the, uh, of the analogy, shooting yourself in the foot. I just, <laughs> that did not escape me. <laughs> that <did> not escape <laughs> me. <laughs> But uh, Tory Lane's daddy, you need to shut up. Like Rihanna's daddy needed to shut up. She had to sue him into shutting up. So Tory, you better get your pappy because you didn't already admit it. I was drunk and I was acting an ass. Now you want to say he didn't shoot. You weren't even there. I will not be speaking of his name, like I said. So I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know him. Speaking of Issa Rae, not Lisa Rae, she's launched a new production company, Hooray. 
and she's landed a new show on HBO. Please, God, let it be better than Insecure. I'm I, want, I want the writing to be better, that's all. What? I just want the writing to be better. That's the show, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, yes, the cinematography is beautiful. They show Black people in fabulous clothes and amazing light. But um, I'm going to need a little more dialogue and a little, like, if you want to do an art project where you just show beautiful Black people in beautiful clothing and take stylized pictures, there it's called photography. And we can celebrate that. Like, let's celebrate Black visual artists. Let's celebrate Black sculptors. Let's celebrate Black photographers. Let's celebrate Black painters. I am not opposed to it. But if you're going to do television, they're called talkies for a reason. You need to act like this is not silent film. Like half the show, I feel like it's silent film. Like, I'm sorry, we're out of that. These are talkies. So I'm going to need you to, like you said, write better. Because I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna watch Michaela Cole before I watch her. I'm sorry. Rihanna addresses her new album, and I'm gonna call her Rihanna when she's talking about music because Rihanna is Rihanna Fenty. Rihanna is, you know, some artist who thinks she's gonna make a comeback. But she addresses her new album. Everything is so heavy, I'm using music as my outlet. No, girl, you keeping your stuff from being in outlet stores. That's what you're doing. We saw how fast Eminem and G-Unit's clothing went. That shit went straight to Burlington. So I am, I congratulate Rihanna for Fenty, but uh, Rihanna and this music, like, it's just like, it's like when a man lies to you so many times, you just stop believing his ass. And you said that album has been coming out for so long, I don't believe your ass. It's been two or three years since she's been saying it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. I don't care. I don't care at this point. I don't. Oh, we have a little bit more Housewives news. And this is something I know you'll enjoy, or I think you'll enjoy. Garcelle wants Sheree, Will Smith's ex-wife, to join her on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I didn't know she had that kind of money. Um, I can see that. I mean, I'm fine with that. It's, it's, it's not, you know, Nicole, but I'll take her. You I'm love saying, I, I've been saying Nicole Murphy so long, but yeah, um, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, she was on the show, and I think Garcelle needs an ally. I think she needs a real friend. Because those other women, they're not real friends. No. No, they're not. I feel like you need to watch Alien Nation, because you love Nicole Murphy so much, I think you need I to- I do not love her. I do not love her. <laughs> okay. You want to see her on TV so much. I think that if you watched Alien Nation, you would be like, okay, I got my Nicole Murphy fix. I do think that Beverly Hills can use another Black housewife because I still want to keep Garcelle on, at least for one more season. I don't think she's a, a one and done housewife. The only reason, I, like, honestly, to me, I felt like she was gaming the system. But if she's going to stay for another season, I would love it. I also think they had to <coughs> cough up and pay her. And she was definitely a fan favorite. But I would definitely say, um, I don't, I, I know Will Smith's ex-wife was on that other show, but I, I didn't watch the other show, um, The Real Exes of Hollywood, the one with the alienation woman. And I'd be willing to give Sheree a shot, especially if she can, you know, keep up with Garcelle, because Gar, I would say this, if Garcelle co-signs you, I feel like you're going to know how to do reality. Because Garcelle came on so clean, so smooth, so professional. I wish she was running for motherfucking president because she would have done better at that debate. <laughs> well said. So with that, um, I'll see you sooner than the next October surprise. Hopefully it's a good one. Ah! I'll see you sooner than someone sees a negative test. Mm. <laughs> So much, like, that's some good shade where you can just say so much with saying, like, nothing at all, you know? <laughs>